So today we're going to pick up where we left off um, with exercise 120, which is really about taking your floor plan and taking it to the next level and, and making it something that's worth uh, presenting. So in the world of AutoCAD, um, it's one thing to know how to draw something, and it's another thing to make whatever you draw look good. And my, my goal in this, uh, specifically in this class, is to give you the tools that you need to be able to showcase your designs and actually uh, make stuff look good when it goes up on the wall. That is a very different set of tools than what you would need if you went to work as a draftsperson in an office. Uh, they would have different expectations of you. They'd want you to, to know different things, etc. But you're in school, uh, and my job is really to, to get you to the point where you can draw and present your ideas and have them look really good. So uh, the next several classes, I'm going to focus on how do we create uh, good quality drawings out of AutoCAD such that you'd be proud to present them. And uh, we're going to focus kind of on that. And with that being said, we're going to take uh, a rather basic floor plan and attempt to turn it into something that has a lot more readability in it, something that looks like this, that has thickness to it, that has uh, furniture in it, that has flooring in it, and that sort of thing. And so I want to walk through kind of the steps involved and some of the strategies for how do you really go about making uh, a really flat, basic drawing show up and look good when you go to print it. The other thing that's always a challenge is when you go to plot something in real life, and it comes out of the printer, it always looks slightly different than what the screen looks like. And you'll see that today. Uh, you kind of have to imagine what things are going to look like a little bit uh, as you go forward. And I'll, I'll help you through those kind of basic steps. So I have a floor plan uh, roughly designed based on the, the design parameters that I gave you last class. Uh, and I'm going to use this as my example piece. Uh, let me zoom in here really quick with a window so that we have it as large as possible that, so that you guys can see it. So I talked last class a bit about layers. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time really diving into what layers are and why they're important, et cetera, because now we'll start to use layers to organize our work and assign line weights and that sort of thing as well. So uh, right now, if I were to come up to the very top ribbon, this is again under the home ribbon, uh, right in the center, I have my layers and I have my layer properties. And so if I click on the layer properties button, it will bring up my layer properties window. I'm going to move this down here so it's in the center so you guys can see it a little bit better. Uh, and right now I have three layers. I have uh, layer 0, which is the default AutoCAD layer. You can't get rid of layer 0. It just exists. That's the way AutoCAD works. Then I have a layer called plan, and I have a layer called topography, which is what I suggested that you do last time uh, in last class so that you had your plan layer and we had our topography layer. Your topography layer may be locked uh, because I talked about that as well by clicking on the little padlock. So uh, I want to start to organize my floor plan into better layers. Uh, and what I, will, what I will do and what I hint at on exercise 120 is I'm going to assign some layers for various objects, like the walls are all going to go on one layer. The doors are going to go on one layer. The windows are going to go on one layer. And so for the scope of this class, there's nothing wrong with just making a layer called walls or making a layer called doors. Okay? If you were going to work in a firm, there is a set of adopted standards for how you name your layers. Uh, and generally speaking, the firms stick to those because if you're in an architecture firm and you're drawing certain things, you might be partnered with a civil engineer who's drawing certain civil things. And you might be partnered with a geotechnical engineer that's doing those. You might be partnered with an electrical engineer who's doing the electrical plan. And Therefore, you need some kind of way of designating who draws on what layer and what's legal for somebody to, to work on. Uh, and so in the, in the world of an office, typically your wall layer, if I were to create a new layer, and I'll do that by clicking on the little stack of papers with a star next to it, would be called A-Wall. Right? Or A, you could do it all capitals. Okay? And the A stands for that it's an architectural drawing, and the architectural firm is the one doing the work on this. Okay? If it was a civil uh, engineer that was working, it would start with C. You get the idea. right? An electrical engineer would start with E, et cetera. So conventionally, it would be called A-wall. Okay? We would have a, a layer called A-door. We would have a layer called A-window. You get the idea. Okay? So 
Do you need to have the A designator for this class? Absolutely not. But I like to point that out so that if you were going to work for a firm or, or you visited a firm, you'd have an understanding that there's a specific naming convention to that. Furthermore, if we look at this, let's look at the A wall layer for right now. We talked about locking the layer or unlocking the layer with the little padlock. But there's also two icons. There's a light bulb icon and there's a sun icon next to uh, this wall layer. Okay? Both of these on the surface appear to do the exact same thing. Okay? They would, in, in either case, they would turn off um, the layer so that it's not visible. There is, however, a very subtle difference between the two. Turning off the layer leaves the layer within the system memory. Freezing the layer gets it out of the system memory. It's not something that's relevant for any of the complexity of drawings that you will ever touch in school. Right? So this is something, if you had a skyscraper with a bunch of layers, like hundreds of layers, this might be relevant. Okay? For our purposes, stick with the sun to turn it on and turn it off. It's good habit to be in. But again, it's not particularly relevant for what you're doing. Either option will work fine. But I like to at least point that out. Okay? We already talked about lock. The next thing over here is color. And so for the most part, the colors are going to stay white or some shade of gray. Now, in an office, uh, there's two ways of plotting line weights. In the, in the very old days, and so one of the things you have to recognize in the world of um, architecture, you've got architects who are old, right? Who have been practicing forever, okay? They have a certain way of doing things, and they always will keep doing those things. So when you work with a program like AutoCAD, it has to span the people who are old and do it the old way, and the people who are new and do it the new way. And sometimes firms are somewhere in the middle. Okay? So depending on who you work for, you may have different answers to this question. But in the way old days, plotters or big printers, right, the printed wide format, used to not be like a giant inkjet printer. They used to have actual pens that went in them. I know this sounds totally fascinating, right? They're actually, I've seen it where they had pencils and they would plot in pencil. Anyway. So they used to have like a, it was like a disc, and it had a bunch of pens that were stuck in the disc. And so you would assign each of those pens to a color in the world of AutoCAD. And when your print came out of the big printer, right, when you, 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 your drawing was like a red line, it would use the red designated pen to draw the, that part of the line on the plotter. Like it's totally old fashioned, okay? But that technology or that strategy still exists in a lot of firms. They still plot by color, right? So you may encounter a firm where you see a, a particular AutoCAD drawing and the layers have specific colors on them and those layers ultimately get plotted to a specific line weight, a specific thickness, okay? People that work in those kinds of firms can see a drawing and know what the line weights are based on the colors of the drawing. I can't. It doesn't help me at all to look at that drawing. It just looks like a bunch of colors. Okay? So what I'm going to suggest that you do, and what a lot of smaller firms or younger architects tend to do, is to just assign the line weights manually and not worry about the color. Okay? The color stays black, or in this case, white. And the, the, um, the line weight, if I move this over, is going to be assigned right here to the layer as a whole. Okay? Especially when you're in school, I think this is a much simpler strategy. You don't have to worry about CTB tables and, and whatever. Okay, so we're going to stick with the, the basics here. Okay, so first off, under the color section, generally speaking, we're going to leave it as white. Though sometimes, and I'll suggest when we do the hatch a little bit later today, you might use one of these shades of gray, okay, which can be useful when you're plotting. It just makes it not so dark. Okay, can, can help. And it's certainly something that I use in practice. So we will, we will be choosing those. While you're drawing, if it is helpful to see the difference, and we will do this next class when we draw the elevations, we may temporarily choose a color for a particular layer just to be able to see it different than white. Okay? So you can always temporarily change a color and then turn it back to, to uh, black later on. Okay? So um, when we go forward here, we have color. I'm going to leave all of them as white for right now. Then we move on to something called line type. And so by default, you see that all the line types are called continuous. That basically means a non-dashed, regular old line. Okay? However, there are other line types that are available to us should we want them. 
Okay, so right now listed, I only have hidden two, which is a dashed line. But if I wanted something else, I could click on the load button, and you can see that there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different types of lines that we could use. So if you wanted a center line or a phantom line or uh, a gas line or, or whatever, there's a lot of different line types that are available. Uh, and all you would need to do is click on one. So let's see if I can find something here. Okay, let's do the regular hidden line. I'd say okay, and that'll then show up as the regular hidden line. Okay, and I can pick between these. So for example, if I wanted the wall layer to be the regular hidden line, I could say okay, and you see that now it says it's a hidden line. Okay? The one thing to point out relating to these line types is that nothing will show up in this black background. Right? They'll all look like solid lines. We will get to a view called paper space where the line types will show up. But it's important to recognize that you won't see any change at this stage. Okay? So I'm going to switch that back to continuous. I don't want it to be a dashed line. I want it to be a continuous line. And so now it's set up as continuous. Yeah? Is there a reason it's set up so that we can't see it unless we switch to paper view? So without getting into too much of an explanation of the difference between paper space and model space, um, because we're going to get there soon, a couple days of class, AutoCAD set up to have a, a workspace in which you draw everything full size that's not about what it's going to look like when it's printed. It's about drawing it full size and understanding the spatial relationships of elements. Okay? Then we switch into a view called paper space. And when we're in that, it's about scale, making it show up on a piece of paper. Okay? And it's set up di very differently such that you actually have a white piece of paper and you see what things look like on the page. And so AutoCAD tries to separate the design process, the full scale stuff, from the stuff that comes out as a printer. Uh, and so therefore, it saves the scaling of the line types and the line weights to be showing up in that view. And so it's a little hard to get used to, but as you move forward in AutoCAD and you start to do more complex drawings, you see why it's valuable to have the difference. Okay? So I will talk more about it later, but it's a good question. Okay? That's kind of the overview of where we're going. Okay, so I have continuous line type. The next thing over here is the line weight category. And so by, by default, all of the line weights are default. Okay? But if I wanted, say, the walls to be thicker, I would click where it says default under line weight. Oops, that's the wrong layer. Apologize. Right there. Okay? And you see that I have line weights from 0.00, .00 way up to 2.11 listed. Okay? And so in practice, on the screen, it's pretty difficult to see line weights up to 0.25. They're different, and they will show up when you print. But you really need to start at 0.3 to see a difference on screen. Okay? On the back of your handout, right here, is a little floor plan. And I have some suggested line weights that you might want to use for your drawings. This doesn't mean that these are the absolute correct ones to use. It's just ones that I've found in practice to look pretty good when you go ahead and, and, and print. Okay? So for example, the walls, if I can find them, right? I say use 0 0.40 millimeter in black. Okay? So since we're on the wall layer, I'm going to choose 0 0.40 as my line weight. And I'll say OK. okay, And we can see that it's listed there. I also say for the windows right, to go ahead and use 0.00. .00. So there's window. And I'm going to change to 0.00, .00 which is a nice thin line in black. For the doors, I suggest 0.18. And so let me go to door. And I suggest 0.18. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Right? So I'm going through and I'm changing the thicknesses of these lines right here. What happens is that any line that's drawn on this will by default have this weight assigned to it. Okay? It's kind of like if you, if you were drafting by hand and you picked up a different pen and started drawing. Um, so I have more. We'll, we'll come back to more of the different strategies here in a second. Okay? But again, that's just a guide for you. Yeah. So the, yeah, it's, it's a great question. And it was, why are, basically, why are we using millimeters for 
our thicknesses of pens and using inches for our main drawing units. You can actually switch and make these not in millimeters. The reason that these stick in millimeters is because those pens that are the rapidograph pens that people used to draw by hand. Remember I talked about the architects being old and, and these old traditions hanging on, right? When you used to draft these by hand and you used ink pens to do the final version of your, of your work, they were all listed in millimeter sizes. And if you go today and go buy a set of pens, uh, if they're you know, graphic pens or whatever, they're listed in millimeters on the side. So that's why we still use those as our, as our default units, because they're supposed to be what the pen version would be. And so we as old architects know, oh, a .40 pen looks about this thick. Okay? So it's a little counterintuitive. But you're not actually mixing unit. It's just the designation for the thickness of the pen. Okay? Great question. OK, so we're going to continue on. I have those line weights set. Right? I do have the ability to adjust the transparency of a, of a line. In practice, uh, in, in working in this, in this industry for as long as I have, I have never adjusted the transparency. It doesn't mean it's not possible, but it is an option, but I've never done it. Okay? Uh, we continue on over here. Uh, this is the plot color. Uh, nothing for you to worry about. Leave it as the default. When we come to the next layer here, this designates whether or not we're actually going to print or plot the stuff that's on the layer. So for right now, yes, we do want to print everything that's on these layers. But if and when we use guideline layers or construction line layers, like when we do the elevations next class, we'll make the layer non-printing. So it won't actually show up when you go to print. So you can deliberately turn off a layer. Okay? And then this last column has to do with when, you, when you're working in paper space, do you want this particular um, layer to show up in every new viewport that you create or not? Okay? It's way beyond the scope of this class, but since it's there, I like to at least tell you what it is. Okay? Nothing for you to worry about at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and make my wall layer active. So I'll double click to change the green check to the wall layer. And then I'll close my layer properties manager altogether. Okay? So at this point, I need to take all of these lines that are currently on the plan layer and move them so that they're on the wall layer. Okay? So I need to go through and I need to actually select my lines. And so I could go and hold down Shift and continue to select. Sorry, I don't have to. I don't have to hold down Shift. I could continue to work my way around the drawing and click on them. But remember, we had selection strategies where I drew little boxes before. Remember, anything from the right to the left selects anything that it touches. Anything uh, from the left to the right is only what's included. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to select things that are the wall. And you'll see that as I'm selecting, I mix which direction I'm drawing my boxes. By the way, if you click and hold, you can do a custom shape that selects. I rarely do that, but I like to at least point out that it's there. All right, so let me work the rest of the way through here. Almost there. Thanks for bearing with me. All 
OK, so I made all of the walls, oops, except for this one, there, like that. I did make one mistake. I'm going to hold down Shift to deselect that line. OK, so I have all the walls selected. And all I need to do to switch the layer is once, once they're selected, I come up to this Layers part of the Home ribbon, and I select this little drop down. Right now it says Plan. That's the layer they're currently on. And I'll switch to Wall. Okay. And when I switch to Wall, they should all switch, and this is my mistake here, to being thick. Because remember, I assigned a thickness to these layers. Uh, in my drawing, I had, I had overridden the, the thickness of, a, of the materials, or excuse me, of the lines um, over here under the properties. That's why it didn't show up right away. Let me make sure that this one piece that I missed ends up on the wall layer, and there we go. Okay? And so you can see that all of those are now thick lines. Okay? Much the same way if I were to switch to the final version here, see how all the lines are thick. Okay? If your lines don't show up as thick, even though they are 0.4, you may not have your line weight turned on. And if your line weight isn't turned on, you have to make sure two things. One, it's showing. So there's a little box here for line weight. Looks like this. And it's really difficult to, for you guys to see at the bottom. It's like a line, a line with a little box on it, and a line with a little box on it. This is filled in. Something like that. So you want to make sure that that is turned blue, which displays the line weights. OK, so I have the line weights on, and we can see it. Now I need to go through and change the layers so that uh, the doors, for example, are on the doors layer. Yeah? Uh, what do you turn on the line weights in a scale register? Could be a line weight scaling issue. I'll come and have a look and see. Did you, did you, is the line weight 0.4? Okay, it should show at 0.4, but I'll have a look. Okay, so I want to switch the doors. Now, I could go through and I could select the doors on the doors layer, but it may be easier. Let me, I have to unlock the doors layer there. It may be easier to turn off the wall layer, right? So let me make the door layer the active layer, and I just switched with nothing selected. I, I selected a different layer in this drop down, and then I'm going to turn off the walls, and you see that all the walls go away which makes selecting the doors much, much easier. So I'll go through and I'll select the doors. All right, so there's my doors. And I'll switch that to the A door layer. Let me take my windows. And let's put the windows on the A window layer. I have to unlock it, and then I can switch it to the A window layer. Perfect. I'll hit Escape to get out. Okay. And so now we can turn back on the walls, and the doors and the windows are assigned to their correct layers as well. Okay. And you may find that you missed something, and you can always go back and, and assign it after the fact. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've done that. Now I may need a few more layers to help designate what's happening uh, it might be useful, if I click on Layer Properties, to add a layer called A-Fern for the furniture, right, or the cabinets, et cetera. I tend to use the furniture layer for things like the kitchen sink and the counters and all that stuff. Okay, so I'll go ahead and select that, which I think is my only furniture here right now. That's the kitchen cabinets, and we'll put it on the A-Fern layer. So now I have a decent floor plan set up. Okay? I have thickness to my walls. I have my windows and my doors assigned on their correct layer with some thickness. But if I come back to the final version, we have a quick look, it would be really nice to have some furniture, maybe some beds, right, and that sort of thing, to be installed in here as well. So let's put those into the, the drawing. Now I could spend time and I could draw the couch for example. But the truth is that there's a lot of people that have drawn couches before. And so do I really need to spend my time drawing a couch? No. Let me go online and find something that I can use. So um, if we go to, there's a, there's a website called First in Architecture. 
Uh, if you do a Google search for AutoCAD block, there's lots and lots of them out there. The first in architecture ones are pretty high quality and, and seem, seem decent. Okay? So for example, here's our free CAD blocks, furnitures, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, sofas and couches. Let me go ahead and click on that. Okay, you see a bunch of couches and, and stuff that, that, they've, uh, that are included with this. And I can download. Now, I want to download in the imperial format, not the metric format, so my units are correct. And I'll go ahead and download it. Okay, and it shows up as a zip file. So let me show it in my folder. There it is, as a zip file. If I double click, I can see inside it there's an AutoCAD file. Okay, it's not very large. I'm going to go ahead and copy this file and put it on my flash drive or on my OneDrive into today's folder. And I'll go ahead and paste. There it is. And so now I can go back to my AutoCAD file here, and I can bring in this file. Now I'm going to switch and make sure that I'm on the furniture layer, because obviously what I'm bringing in is furniture. And I'll go to the Insert tab. So thus far we've done everything on the Home ribbon. I'm going to go to the Insert ribbon, okay, and I'll click on the Insert button. And this will ask me to go browse for that file. So let me go in to my flash drive for today. And there it is. And I'll go ahead and click on Open. And then I'll go ahead and say OK. And you see when it comes in, it comes in as a big block okay, with all of this various furniture. Now chances are I don't want all of this. I want just a piece of it. So I'll go ahead and type explode to break it apart. And once I've broken it apart, I can pick just one of these, depending on which one I want. Okay? So let's say that I want something against this wall right here. Right? Maybe this couch would look nice. Eh, let's use this one. Okay? And I'll go ahead and copy it. And I can drop it into this room like that. Okay? So I'm giving myself some furniture relatively easily without having to actually draw it. Okay? So I could bring in more. So those are the sofas. I'm done with the sofas. We'll go ahead and delete those. I just select it and press delete on the keyboard. And I can go back to insert and I could bring in something else. Notice after I've loaded it, they all show up here in the little drop down menu. So I can insert, even though I've deleted the big block, I could come back and bring any of the rest of these in. Okay? I'll go back and I'm going to open again and I could open up, uh, let's see, here's the dining tables, also came from first in architecture. Go ahead and open those. That was not what I wanted to do, sorry. I wanted to insert it. And let me find it. Where was my dining tables? There we go. All right, so we can drop it in. Same thing. This time I'll type explode. And I'll pick another dining room table. And we'll move that over into the kitchen. OK, so you get the idea. So I'm dropping these pieces in. When I'm done with them, I can get rid of them. Okay. If you spend time on the first in architecture site, you'll see as you go backwards in time, there's lots and lots of different things that are out there, including beds and, and what have you. There are some special types of blocks. You see that they're called dynamic. It means that they have attributes on them that can change, like size. You could pick a specific size window. Generally, these are designed by companies or people that are trying to mimic a, a particular product line where you can adjust options and whatever. Uh, those are available uh, as well. You're more than welcome to try them out. Uh, I, have, I have, because it's not my website, I don't know for sure that they're going to work perfectly. Uh, there's your beds and wardrobes, so you can drop your beds in, et cetera. You know, lamps, you know, whatever. You get the idea, right? You can even have a dump truck if you really want one. But <laughs> the point is there's lots of things that are, that are built for you so that you don't have to draw them. Uh, and the more you put those kinds of things in, the better your drawings are going to look because they're going to feel realistic, right? One of the things that happens in, when you're in a studio class, depending on what you're trying to draw or do, 
you can choose to make an empty room and type in dining room, or you could put a block that has a dining room table and some chairs. Okay? When you put a block that has some dining room table and chairs in it, we as reviewers or fellow students or whatever understand that's a dining room without having to label it as dining room. So there is a strategy oftentimes with a bathroom, say, to go ahead and put things like a toilet in or a sink because then you don't have to label it. You understand that, yes, obviously this is a bathroom, right? Or obviously this is a, a dining room. It's more common in residential work to put the furniture in. If you're doing commercial work or like say a theater or something, it's unlikely that you're gonna put all the individual pieces of furniture in, okay? So it's just something to be aware of. So all of this is available on this website. You're more than welcome to download them. Uh, luckily, they don't even make you sign up for it. You can just download them for free, okay? So that's inserting blocks, okay? And as you see here, I've, I've put more blocks in, right? I put the bathroom in, et cetera. There's no reason for, me to, for you to sit here and watch me put blocks in. You can put a stove in, you get the idea, okay? There is a system of built-in blocks in the world of AutoCAD that I used to emphasize um, through its design center, which under the insert tab is over here on the right. It's not very good. They just don't have a lot of things. It doesn't work very well. If you were a practicing architect, you might have a downloaded collection from the suites catalog of specific products to insert, in which case this whole design center thing might work a little bit better. But for us in a school environment, uh, even if I were to click on it, finding where they are on the school computer is totally a pain, okay? Because they're hidden inside some folder called en-us, inside Design Center, and then you can keep diving in here under Design Center. Okay, let's go to our uh, you know, kitchens, and then we can go into our blocks related to our kitchens. And okay, there it is, right? So it's, it's just not user-friendly. It's, to me, it's a lot easier to go to a website like First and Architecture, see the picture, download it. Okay, that'll work. Okay. The other thing that you can do if you want something from a specific manufacturer, so say, ex for example, I really like Kohler toilets, right? You can go to the Kohler website, and let's go into kitchen and bath, and... Uh, go. Right. It's amazing how good they can make a toilet look, right? You know? <laughs> anyway, so you can continue on and you can pick a product. Uh, let's see if uh, they'll let me in here. Let's go to bathroom. Let's go to toilets. Sure, comfort height toilet. Sounds, sounds wonderful. Okay, and so we could pick something. Oh, the Numi Intelligent Comfort Height Skirted One Piece Elongated Dual Flush Toilet. But it doesn't have a remote. <laughs> Darn it. That just killed it for me. Anyway, uh, so on one of these things, when you come down to the bottom, right, look, template and symbol downloads, 2D CAD files, in plan, DWG, boom, right, I'll download that. I'm just going to open it so you can see it really fast. Right, there it is. I mean, this is not the most exciting toilet in the world from plan view, but you get the idea, right? So I went to the, the manufacturer's website. They have the AutoCAD file for me to be able to drop this particular toilet into my drawing, okay? It's pretty neat. And, and this happens also besides the, the 2D environments. It does happen in the 3D environments as well. Notice there's a 3D CAD file as well. So I can use that and drop it into, say, Rhino or something like that and render it up. Right? Now, for this particular toilet, you know, it's not the most exciting toilet from top view, but if you were doing a, a standard toilet, ooh, it has a light. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you were doing a standard toilet instead of the really fancy toilet, right? Let's see here. I'm trying to fix, fix, pick one with lots of flutes and stuff. Right, so here we are. Here's our 2D. Plan, DWG, we'll download that again, I'll open it, there you go, okay? So this would be hard to draw with all the swoops and, and get it to look accurate, but if you drop this in, it clearly says, I'm a toilet, okay? 
So the, the point is, and the, the reason that I'm emphasizing this, is go and find something like this and drop it in, because it'll add that much realism to your particular drawing. You're doing a small house, all the more reason to include the furniture as part of it. OK, so let me switch back to the drawing itself. And we'll close this. There I am. Sometimes it's useful to establish like flooring or something at, as a texture to the bottom of your drawing. And we can do that using something called a hatch. And what a hatch is, is it's a pattern that gets filled inside a region. And we're going to go ahead and, and use the hatch command to, to fill in some various regions inside my drawing. If I were to look at the one that I've already finished here, you see that I've put some just horizontal lines to represent some wood flooring in the building. And then outside, I used kind of a, um, you know, a stone pattern of some kind. Okay? Like going to the Kohler website, if you went to a particular uh, manufacturer's website, say you wanted to do Belgard pavers, many times you can download a hatch pattern that represents their particular pattern of pavers. Okay, so it's worth recognizing that that's something you can do should you want to. We're going to use the, the generic defaults for right now. So let me switch back to my basic view here. And I'm going to go ahead and start with a command called hatch. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll type in hatch. And I'll hit enter. And you see that my little prompt says, pick an internal point or select objects. So by internal point, it says, it's basically telling me, find something that's inside your building that's completely contained by objects, and I will fill it in for you. Okay? Um, so I could, for example, pick this outside area right there. And when I click on that point, it's going to fill it in with a given hatch. So up here in the ribbon, notice that once I type hatch, I get a new ribbon called hatch creation that pops up. Okay? This ribbon will allow me to specify what hatch. So under, under the pattern section, if I click the little triangle, I'll be able to see a bunch of preset hatches that I can pick from. Okay? So we're going to use some of the basic ones. Obviously, you could pick something like stars or, or whatever, but that might not be exactly what you were after. Right? So I'm going to use a very basic hatch. Right? Since it's outside, I'll use uh, maybe a brick pattern, something like this, this ARB816. Uh, okay? And so I'll pick that. And when I move over, you see that instead of being solid now, it's showing it as a little brick pattern. Okay? So all I have to do is click on the area that I want it to go, and that hatch pattern will exist there. Right? I could fill in this area as well. And I'll go ahead and press Enter to be done. Now in this case, right, the door swings open over the patio. So I really need a little line that goes across to mark the threshold of the door. And then I can come back to my hatch again. Uh, hatch, by the way, is right there if you wanted to pick the button. And I could pick that inside area, and it will continue. Notice that it lines up with the hatch before, so it knows where to line things up. Okay, So I have that designed. I probably need another little line right here. And I could hatch again for that area as well. And I'll press Enter. So now let's say I want to do the flooring. Okay, So I'm going to go back to Hatch once again. But this time I'm going to change. So instead of using the brick pattern, I'm just going to use some horizontal lines. We'll use this ANSI 31. Okay, Those lines right now are diagonal. And they're also really dense. Right? If I zoomed in far enough, I'd probably be able to see them. But they're too dense. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to come over to the Properties section, and I'm going to adjust the scale. And I think I want the scale to be 0.25. And then let's have a look. Okay, it's still too dense. Let me go ahead and press Enter to finish. And this is one of the great things about CAD, is you can make a hatch, and then you can go back and edit the properties afterwards. Let me go the opposite way. Let me try 10. Yeah, I have to go that way. Right. Let me go to 20. Let me go to 30. Right. That's looking about right. Right. Maybe 35. Right. You see that it's it's adjusting the scale of this hatch pattern. Now, maybe I want the strong diagonal flooring, but in this case, I really don't. So I'm going to go to where it says angle, and I'm going to change the angle to be. Let's try negative 45. 
Okay, that would be horizontal. Maybe I want it to be vertical. So let me change the um, to be positive 45. There we go. And now it's going vertically. Now I need to add. So I'll go back to my hatch pattern right here. And I want to add in that area. I want to add in my bathroom. And I want to add in my bedroom, that bedroom, the closet, like that. Okay, And I'll press Enter to finish. So it is supposed to detect automatically your block object, your furniture, and not put the hatch pattern inside of your furniture. Okay. Now, depending on who made the block originally, there may be problems with the block. It may not do this. It may go right underneath the block, or it may fill in certain regions of the block. If all else fails, right, go ahead and uh, take your furniture, turn your furniture off altogether, hatch the floor underneath, and we'll just make it a lighter color, and the furniture will float on top. Okay? That's one of those things where I know you guys get frustrated, but because you're borrowing somebody else's blocks, sometimes they don't do them right. Okay? Could you explode the block? Could you fix it? Yes, there are always ways around it, but you're adding complexity that you don't need to worry about at this stage. Okay? So the other thing about these, these hatch patterns is they will end up being rather heavy if we don't adjust the line weights um, and, the, um, and the color so that they're a little bit lighter. If you look at the back, right, you see that I have flooring installed, just like I did here, but it's very faint. Okay, that was by design, so it doesn't overpower the, the drawing itself. It just adds a nice layer of detail to my drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my layer properties. I'm going to create a new layer. This is probably not one that a firm would use, but I'm going to call this A-flooring. Okay, And I'm going to make the flooring layer be 0.00, .00 and I'm going to make it have a color of 251 gray, this gray the second one over in gray. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Now whenever you use gray in the world of AutoCAD, you do have to do a test plot to make sure that it will show up on the particular plotter that you're going to use for your final drawing. Okay? For the sc so scope of this class, when you do your assignment 105, you're going to plot to one of the plotters in the other room. It is what it is, however they turn out. I'm not asking you to do a test plot for that. But down the road, if you're trying to do a presentation drawing to go up on a wall, there is a distinct difference between the plotters that are over there, the newer ones that are black, and the one in the back of the room here in terms of how they plot grays. So you really have to do a test. You have to make sure it looks right. Okay? It's, it's, it's one of those important things. So generally speaking, 251 is good. 0.00, .00 is good. I'll go ahead and close my layers. Then I need to select all of my hatches. Okay, they're all selected. And I'm going to switch. I'm going to go back to the home ribbon. And I'll switch from the furniture layer to the flooring layer. And you see that now the, the hatches are much lighter. Okay, They're kind of a gray. Okay, So it's a little bit counterintuitive when you do the grays because they go from dark to light. White is actually black. So if you did a really, really light gray, it would look the same as white, but it's not actually white. So you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, when that happens. Okay? So now that we have our flooring, we have our wall thickness, this floor plan is starting to look pretty good. And that's obviously the idea. Okay? Uh, we could make things hidden lines should we want to. Uh, you know, If they were overhangs or something like that, you could draw a little bit of that. You see that I have that listed here as well. Okay? Um, maybe these upper cabinets need to have a different line type. And this brings up a good point. These, by default, are on the furniture layer, so therefore they have the properties of the furniture layer. But I can override just for these lines using the individual object properties tool here. I can say that no, I actually want these to have a thickness of 0.00, .00 and a line type of hidden 2. Okay, so that's going to override the settings for just those lines. So uh, those are set. Again, you won't see anything relating to those right now Oops. because they essentially look the same. However, when we go to print them, they will look different. Okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So we've gotten through doing layers. We've gotten through doing blocks. We've done hatches. And we've assigned line weights both by layer and individually to objects. Okay? 
So take the rest of the time today to continue to work on your floor plans, get a nice quality floor plan, add detail, add furniture, add blocks, add line weights, organize your layers, right? Then next class, we're gonna try to draw elevations. Okay, and we'll continue from there. Are there any questions? No? All right.